Imagine a sadistic official in charge of the Nazi secret police, someone who didn't even respond to the Führer himself. We're talking about Heinrich Müller, one of the most cynical, cruel, and mysterious figures of Nazism. For most of World War II, he was the head of the Gestapo, the Nazi state's secret police. From this position, Muller played a crucial role in the planning and execution of the Holocaust, following his attendance at the Wannsee Conference in January 1942, where plans were formalized for the deportation and murder of all Jews in German-occupied Europe. In this video, we will recount his brutal rise to power, his disagreements with Nazism, his challenging relationship with the party, and his alleged death, shrouded in mysteries that remain unresolved to this day. Welcome to this installment of Military History. Don't move away from the screen and enjoy this gripping video. Muller was born in the city of Munich on April 28, 1900, the son of traditional Catholic parents, a housewife and a rural police officer. He was a wartime aircraft mechanic and was recruited for World War I. After the war, he joined the Bavarian police as an auxiliary worker, participating in the repression of violent communist uprisings in the early post-war years. Something changed in Muller after witnessing the execution of hostages by the revolutionary Red Army in Munich. Within him, an immense hatred for communism was born, which he would carry with him until the end of his days. During the years of the Weimar Republic, he served as the head of the political police department in Munich, rapidly rising through the ranks due to his characteristic and energetic efforts. His activities in the force involved supervising and dealing with the communist movement, which he fought against fiercely, often ignoring legal and regulatory provisions. This made him a terrifying threat to the Reds. In terms of his character, it was even worse than his political qualities, which were steeped in racism and violence. Muller's behavior in the police force was ruthless. He constantly tried to prove his efficiency, claiming all the glory for himself, displaying remarkable, even pathological selfishness. An example of this is that, as the chief, his selection of officers for the political police of Bavaria was biased. He chose younger and less experienced officers or those less skilled than himself to keep potential rivals in check. Due to his position in the force, he met many members of the Nazi party, including Heinrich Himmler and Reinhard Heydrich, who found his profile very interesting, even though Muller was a supporter of the Bavarian People's Party, which opposed Nazism. So much so that on March 9, 1933, while the Nazi coup that overthrew the Bavarian government was happening, Muller asked his superiors to use extreme force against Nazi militants. Ironically, this courage, determination, and violence made his figure attractive to the Third Reich. The young policeman was sponsored by Heydrich himself, who saw spectacular value for the party in all these characteristics and his military background. Once the Nazis came to power, Muller's knowledge of communists made him a highly sought-after individual. This led to his promotion to Chief Secretary of Police in May 1933, and shortly after, to Criminal Inspector. This was the beginning of his terrifying career, but not everyone was convinced of his capabilities. Due to his inflexible character, it was evident that Muller was a regime official out of ambition, not a believer in the Nazi doctrine. An internal party document circulating among Nazi leaders read, it is incomprehensible how such a hateful opponent of the movement can become the head of the Gestapo. This assessment did not prevent him from advancing in the ranks, particularly because Heydrich believed it was an advantage not to be tied to the influence of the Nazi party. Officials like Muller were the kind of men Heydrich preferred, as they were inherently committed to their area of responsibility and, consequently, justified any atrocities they deemed necessary against the racial enemies perceived by the Nazi community. Within the Gestapo, Muller was promoted to the rank of Standartenführer, or Colonel, in 1937. He was often immersed in bureaucratic procedures and statistics, a natural administrator who found comfort in the world of notes, memoranda, and regulations he received. 
Despite the expenditure of so much mental energy in the performance of his duties, Muller did not like intellectuals. Witnesses of the time recall that he once told Walter Schellenberg, a well-known SS general, that intellectuals should be sent to a coal mine and blown up. After the Anschluss of 1938, he was appointed inspector of security police for all of Austria, where he began to commit truly sinister acts. One of the significant actions with which he stood out occurred during Kristallnacht on November 9, 1938, when he ordered the unprecedented arrest of around 30,000 Jews. One of his victims recalled him with chills. All I can remember is a pair of penetrating blue-gray eyes, fixed on me with unwavering scrutiny. My first impression was one of cold curiosity and extreme reserve. It was impossible not to see him as a cold and dispassionate murderer. Heinrich Müller formally joined the Nazi party in 1939 for purely opportunistic reasons. Party membership improved his chances of promotion, and Himmler himself urged him to do so. This affiliation was not without controversy, as General Schellenberg commented to colleagues of the time that Müller compared Stalin to Hitler, and the future head of the Gestapo's opinion was that the Russian had done things better. Müller had a preference for the enemy leader, as he was known to secretly admire the Soviet police. In September 1939, when the Gestapo and other police organizations came under Heydrich's command at the main office for security, Muller was appointed head of AMT-4, or Department 4 of the Gestapo. To distinguish him from another SS general named Heinrich Muller, the protagonist of our video became known as Gestapo Muller, a nickname he took particular pride in, performing effectively and ruthlessly. As head of Gestapo operations, Muller played a prominent role in detecting and suppressing all forms of resistance to the Nazi regime. With the trust of both Heydrich and Himmler, Muller was crucial in making the Gestapo the central executive organ of Nazi terror, which targeted anyone who opposed the Third Reich, either actively or due to their race or creed, such as Jews and Roma. Under his leadership, the political police infiltrated and largely destroyed opposing groups, such as the underground networks of the Social Democratic Party and the Communist Party. His proficiency in his work and his burning hatred for communism ensured Muller's future as a Nazi leader. When Hitler and his military leaders requested a pretext for invading Poland in 1939, Himmler, Heydrich, and Muller presented a plan and carried out a false flag operation called Operation Himmler. The idea was to simulate invasions of German territory by Poland. During one of the operations, Muller used a dozen prisoners from concentration camps with Polish surnames, dressing them in Polish uniforms. In exchange for their participation in the mission, Muller told the men they would be pardoned and released. However, at the end of the operation, the men were given a lethal injection and shot to make it appear that they had died in action. These incidents were used for propaganda purposes to justify the invasion of Polish territory, the initial event of World War II. Muller continued to rise rapidly through the ranks of the SS for this performance. In October 1939, he became an SS Oberführer, and in November 1941, he became a Lieutenant General of the Police. In January 1942, Muller attended the Wannsee Conference, where Heydrich informed senior officials about the extermination plan. Just a few months later, in March 1942, Jews were already being systematically killed in portable gas chambers at Chelno and Belzec, while the construction of extermination camps at Birkenau and Sobibor was underway. When the first reports of mass murder reached the Allied press during the winter of 1942, Himmler instructed Muller to ensure that all bodies were buried or burned, a task he performed with perverse pleasure. The application and administration of Nazi policies of racial hygiene were also his responsibility, as revealed in a special letter he sent from Berlin to all Gestapo offices on March 10, 1942. The letter contained instructions on the relationship between Poles and German women, particularly in cases of pregnancy. If both parties were racially acceptable, pregnancy and relationships were allowed without punitive consequences, provided that the security office approved it, 
after the photographic evaluation of both parties and the subsequent Germanization of the poll. In cases where one or more parties were considered racially inadequate, the Polish man would receive special treatment, a Nazi euphemism for a death sentence. In May 1942, Heydrich was assassinated in Prague by Czechoslovak soldiers sent from London. After this event, Muller's influence within the regime diminished with the loss of his original sponsor. Following the death of his mentor, Gestapo Muller took a position closer to Himmler, the overall head of the Nazi police apparatus and the main architect of the plan to exterminate the Jews. He also worked for Adolf Eichmann, the man in charge of organizing the deportations of Jews to extermination camps, so he continued to play a central role in the organization of the Holocaust. After the assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler on July 20, 1944, Muller was entrusted with the arrest and interrogation of all suspects in this possible attack. Over 5,000 German and non-German people were detained, and at least 200 were executed without concrete evidence, showing his relentless, cold, and ruthless nature. Towards the end of the war, Muller still believed that the Germans would emerge victorious. In April 1945, he was one of the last Nazis gathered in the Führer bunker as the Red Army advanced toward the center of Berlin. One of his last known tasks was the interrogation of Hermann Fijelein, an SS officer and Hitler's brother-in-law, suspected of having links with the Soviets. After Himmler attempted to negotiate peace with the Western allies behind the Führer's back, he was expelled from the party and relieved of his duties. Muller himself would be responsible for cold-bloodedly executing Fijeline, once again demonstrating his disdain for communists and anyone associated with them. From April 22, 1945, it becomes increasingly unclear what happened to Heinrich Muller. Some say he disappeared, while others claim that he was appointed as the head of the RSHA on the same day as an emergency measure. The last time he was seen with certainty was on April 30th, lurking outside the Nazi bunker just minutes after the Führer's suicide. After that, the sinister figure in the history of the Third Reich seemed to vanish into thin air without a trace. According to Hans Bauer, Hitler's personal pilot and a close friend of Muller, he said, before disappearing, I know the Russian methods very well. I have no intention of being captured by them. After the fall of Berlin and the surrender of Germany, Muller's whereabouts became a high-priority target for Allied intelligence. Some believed he had escaped to South America along with other Nazis like Joseph Mengel, the doctor who conducted experiments on humans in concentration camps, and Walter Roth, the architect of mobile gas chambers. Sightings of the missing Gestapo chief were reported from Cuba, Argentina, and Czechoslovakia. It was also reported that Muller had gone to work for East Germany's Stasi secret police in the early 1950s, but none of this could be verified. They had to do, collect all the bodies, and Heinrich Müller at that moment was not a prominent person, it was only a body in a general's uniform. In 2013, researcher Johannes Tuchel suggested a possibility that horrified the global Jewish community. Could Gestapo Muller be buried in a mass grave in the middle of a Holocaust victim cemetery? After several investigations, it was discovered that in August 1945, a suspicious body was found in a mass grave on German soil. The deceased was dressed in a general's uniform, and in his pocket, there was a service certificate in the name of SS Gruppenführer Heinrich Muller. The alleged revelation that this dark character was buried in that place, now a memorial site in honor of Jewish figures exterminated during Nazism, was met with disgust by international Jewish leaders. Dieter Grauman, president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany and vice president of the World Jewish Congress, said in a statement, it is an insult to the memory of the Holocaust victims. This mystery could be solved in the mid-50s. There are my next questions. Why didn't happen this at that time? Why do we need so much time? Why was there no investigation? Although his main responsibility was always police work within Germany, Muller was fully in charge, and therefore responsible, for carrying out the extermination of Jews throughout Europe, 
following Hitler's final solution plan, planned by him and Heydrich. These policies killed more than 2 million people, including 1.3 million Jews between 1941 and 1945. We are now nearing the end of this presentation, and we wanted to ask, do you believe Heinrich Muller died in 1945, or did he indeed escape and spend his days in South America? Leave your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming installments of Military History.